promise you it will be the most entertaining uh, fireside chat uh, uh, here at the conference. At least we try to do that. So I'm very welcome to our session, uh, West meets e East, um, will data-driven insure tech uh, companies uh, or insurers win? And actually how to be successful in the East and the West. You will learn from two of the most renowned insurance and insure tech experts uh, in their respective regions. Um, and what's really going on the market and um, actually how to be successful. Who am I? I'm Robin Kira. I'm running digital scouting, a consulting and marketing firm in Europe. So if you need help there, or um, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, but now, welcome on stage, George Good. Kesselman, Chief Commercial Officer of Jong An Tech. Um, probably the number one uh, InsurTech influencer in Asia, and uh, Dr. Stefan Knoll, founder and CEO of the German Family Insurance, the leading and biggest InsurTech in Germany, bigger than all other InsurTech combined, just to drop that fact on stage. Um, <laughs> I have to be quite honest, it was always a dream of mine to have you both on stage. Why? Because you two were the first InsurTechs globally to do an IPO. Uh, it, and you in 2017, or your, your, your mother company in 2017, you in 2018. Um, yeah, and again, we have two... We have two experts on stage, serial entrepreneur, reserve officer and lawyer, Stefan and George, a Canadian with home in Singapore, um, again, also founder of the InsurTech Foundation, and I would say one of the pioneers uh, in the whole InsurTech movement. But now, uh, let's get to some, some serious questions. George, a big question, since we're just alone, probably just watching a few thousand online. Um, you have become chief commercial officer of Jong An Tech as a Canadian in an international Chinese company. How did that happen? And, and, and yeah, how did that happen? It was an interesting journey that had uh, quite, of, uh, quite many twists and turns. So, I, uh, ha coming from Canada, uh, I've ended up in insurance in Asia just right after doing my degree in Canada. It uh, was quite a big coincidence. And then through the, through the time that I spent in Asia, I always saw the region being so, uh, so full of potential for digital and for technology to really uh, bring the technology to a next level. But working with the insurance companies, I always felt like we, the potential wasn't being realized mm -hmm. to the potential degree. And I always kept that eye out for what's, what's coming up next. And uh, when InsurTech started to really kind of bubble up, uh, Zongang was one of the, one of the ones that uh, really was you know, going and growing tremendously. Yeah. Uh, so it caught my eye from early, early days. And I kind of jumped, jumped into following them up until a point where, where the opportunity presented itself. Very cool, very cool. And um, I have a, also a question for Stefan. Um, why did you, first as a reserve officer, but also serial entrepreneur, you had several major exits, or two major exits before in different industry. Um, and why did you then decide to go into insurance, which is not the like, most sexy industry around? Um, yeah. Mm. Also, first of all, thank you for the invitation. Warm welcome to the audience. Due to the fact that I'm... I think I'm the oldest man in this, in this fair. <laughs> I, I, I expected a, a, another question, why an old man like me wants to talk about digitalization. So my first answer is, I'm a digital native captured in the body of an old man. <laughs> Second, and now I like to answer the question. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a lawyer, a foolproof lawyer with two legal state examinations, um, uh, and I'm a reserve officer. I was battalion commander, by the way. Um, well, I joined, I joined, I started my career at the Allianz in '88, so long ago, and um, and I walked from door to door and I sold insurance, and um, and I learned that 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 I'm able to sell almost anything or everything, and um, and. And I became the most successful department leader at Allianz. And in uh, 1994, I started my first company. And then uh, in 2000, my second one, I sold both very successfully. And in 2007, I had enough money in order to found Deutsche Familienversicherung. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm deeply convinced about this branch because it's, um, it's one of the most interesting branches. It, I think it's, it's the most complex thing to run an insurance company because insurance is almost everything. And, um, and I think 
this is this is enough for for a first answer. Okay, that was the warm-up question. I have some mean <laughs> questions prepared. Uh, I hope you know uh, Lemonade, uh, Hippo, and Root don't watch right now. Sorry, guys. Um, how did you manage to become the only uh, listed InsurTech in the West that's actually more valuable after the IPO than before? Well, uh, first of all, we 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 promise less. We fulfill more. And uh, my company is a very solid company, and I think the most important reason for, for being as successful as we are is that we expect profitability this year. And by the way, we have been profitable in 12, uh, 13, 15, uh, uh, 16, 17, yes, and, the, and we, we made losses after we, we realized the IPO. And, um, and, and we will become profitable this year again. And, uh, and I think this convinces the shareholders because the, the mindset turned, I think, dramatically since November last year. Um, it, is, it, it is not any longer key to, to, to grow with, 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 without any view on the, on, on, on the, on the victims. I think it's more important to, to, to earn money at the end, and Deutsche Vermögenversicherung or German insurance, family insurance will earn money this year and, and, and then for the rest of our lifetime. Yeah. George, um, one question for my, the two persons in the audience that don't know Jong An or Jong An Tech, probably I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, I'm super sorry. Um, four facts about both companies that I like to do that people can relate to our edit. So it's a publicly listed company in Hong Kong. Uh, Zhongang is the biggest uh, digital insurer and one of the, uh, you rightly said, the first insurer tech that got publicly listed. Yep. Uh, the company on the insurance front only focuses in China. Um, and uh, on the technology side, on the international side, uh, we have a joint venture with SoftBank. Uh, the last fact, I think, is uh, that we, actually, I, we also have a bank in Hong Kong, Digital Bank, which is, was the first digital bank to launch. Okay, finance insurance, watch out. Um, again, Stefan, um, maybe you can share if, like four facts about German family insurance so that we can relate a little bit to it. I, I, I can share 100 facts. Yeah, uh, so it, it, it is uh, pretty difficult for me to reduce the 100 facts uh, uh, down to four. Uh, first of all, we, we, we are listed. Yeah. Uh, 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 again, the only listed insurtech in Europe. Uh, we, uh, we have a growth rate of more than 30%. Um, uh, third, uh, uh, we will be profitable this year. First quarter was profitable, by the way. And, um, and the fourth point is we are, fu we are fully digitalized. Um, uh, uh, we are more or less fully digitalized, in order to be honest. All right. Um, we will try to get meaner and meaner and more interesting with our questions uh, as we go on. Um, I would say, uh, George, the, 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 even the most ignorant um, uh, European or Western insurance executive heard about Zhong An 2017 with that gigantic IPO and also about some, some data um, considering, um, I don't know, I think you sold one billion policies in a day, which is a lot of zeros, you know. And um, big question is, now we are here in Singapore, when will we see Zhong An Tech or Zhong An in the West? So for Zhongang, you, you, you said it correctly. So we started from Asia being our main focus. So on the technology side, when we came out, we started first with the Japanese and Southeast Asian market because those were a natural fit for us. Uh, right now, we're at a place where we're expanding into Europe. We actually have uh, set up our office uh, in Europe as we speak. Um, and then we have a team that is building up there because we, we see uh, the technology in the, in the East is a couple of years ahead of probably where the, uh, the innovation is uh, in, in the West. So we see a natural progression for us to, to bring that innovation to the West as well. All right. Can you share already which city it is? Uh, it's still being finalized. Ah, we, we, okay. have, we have an office uh, in Ireland. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. If you want to go out of Ireland because of tax reasons, <laughs> we in Germany know a lot of great cities that would love to have <laughs> Jong An and Jong An Tech there. Um, Big question um, to, to Stefan. Um, I talked to a lot of people here behind the scenes. I mean, the conference are already going one and a half days. And when I shared a little bit about you, uh, people said, OK, when are you actually going to expand uh, more into Europe? Um, and my question is, when will we see the German family insurance and your digital model actually around here? 
Oh, wow. Um, also, first of all, we stepped uh, last year into Austria. <laughs> Austria is one of the smallest countries in the European community with 8 million inhabitants. I know that this sounds uh, a little bit ridiculous in comparison to uh, what is going on in Asia. But uh, it was for, 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 for my company, it was an important step because we, we wanted to prove whether, whether, whether our IT system is able to work uh, with, um, to work with uh, products we sell in other European countries. I know that, that, Germany, uh, that, that Austria is, is, is very close to Germany. They speak more or less the same language. The legal system is a little bit similar. Uh, um, uh, but from an IT perspective, it was, a, it was a, a bigger step. Not a great step, a bigger step. The next steps are, uh, or should be France, Italy, Spain, or something like that. I cannot say more because we are listed and, uh, and uh, we prepare this. This, All right. I, I can say, Asia is not on my list in order to be honest. Well, I answered your first question with, 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 with my history. I, I walked from door to door. I know the German living room look like. I know everything about the German situation. And I'm not familiar with other countries. So, so I'm personally very restrictive in, in, in thinking about Asia, and Asia is not, is not a common market. Asia is a variety of almost everything. Uh, so, and, and so, no, not this year. <laughs> okay. uh, what I find really interesting with you guys is that um, both you have your core market and you slowly go uh, knocking from door on door and on different markets around that. I think that's super, super interesting to see both being super different companies but having a similar strategy there. Let's talk more like inside insurance or so inside the insurance organization. Um, digitalization is uh, ongoing in the East and the West. I think nobody can hear this word anymore, but I uh, say it anyway. Um, what is digitalization in your view, in your experience? Is it more product or more process? And which one should we tackle first? Um, George, maybe you want to answer. So in terms of what we can see is that uh, there is a combination. It's not either or. Uh, it's probably both doing it in parallel. Uh, but in terms of the, uh, at the core of innovation, I think it's the process as a starting point. Uh, the process is where you start to adjust the customer experience and start to remove the hurdles and the frictions uh, on that way. Um, and then that, that kind of leads into uh, innovation on the product side as well. Stefan, what's, what's your view on it? Also, I, I, I would like to give a very clear answer. It is the product. It is the product. So. I always ask uh, what is the difference between a biogas plant and, um, and digitalization. And um, you must imagine now a cow making shit on a meadow and you put this shit into a biogas plant. The result is electricity. If you put the same shit into digitalization, you will get fuel shit. So, so you have to start with the product. A product that is not understandable for the, for the customer is, uh, does not become more understandable by using digitalization. So digitalization is for me more a process issue if you present products that are easy to understand. Some of you know maybe the, 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 the movie The Flintstones. It is, it, is, it is a movie produced in US and well known in Europe. Um, that, uh, that, that shows a family in, in, the, in the Stone Age. And, uh, and, um, and the wife from, from this Mr. Flintstone has a dishwasher, and an elephant blows water into the dishwasher, and a monkey cleans the plate. And um, the customer, or the customer expects in claim service only a fast handling, and that his claim is, is, uh, is, is, um, yeah, is organized in a way he expects. So it is not, it, it, he is not interested in digitalization. He is interested in a specific result. And because of this, I, I strongly believe that you have to start with the product. Pro, uh, digitalization from the process side is interesting for the company, but not for the customer, as long as the sales process is 100% digital. Do you, have, do you have anything to, to add that? Since I think it's an interesting discussion. Uh, I think it is. Uh, basically, as I was saying, is it converges to the same place. 
which which one you start, I think, is somewhat debatable. But then you you we're all heading towards the same thing that yeah. the, the process and the product can need to be combined. So whether you start with the process or the product, you know that one cannot function without the other. It's true. A question to you guys, by the way, if you want also to say the product uh, or process, don't hesitate to join uh, or um, uh, use the slide um, uh, app and uh, a slide side there and, and don't hesitate to ask your questions. Um, try to be more direct and meaner than I am. And I think uh, that that's, that's a good thing. All right. Um, I think what's super important is in the insurance industry is people, not only the customer, but also the people that uh, really um, uh, make uh, the, the things happen inside the companies. You need it, if you want to be successful, you need to have a team that supports you. Um, Stefan, you wrote two books on leadership. Uh, one, by the way, is available on English and on Amazon, so don't, uh, don't hesitate to, um, to, to order it. Um, and as a reserve officer, um, what is leadership for you and how do you apply it um, in your company? Uh, and what is your biggest tip for the people here in the room and watching around the world? Uh, this is an easy question, but uh, rather, rather difficult to, 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 to explain in the next two hours. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so uh, well, I think the most important thing is that, that, that the boss give orders that are understandable. Um, 99% of my employees are interested in doing what I want. But they have to understand what, what, the, what is the purpose behind and what is, what is the target we want to reach. And I think this is the most important thing. M most of the bosses never ask themselves whether they are understandable. Mm. And, and I think this is, yeah, this is for me the, the most important thing. And by the way, you, you, you have to be you have to be a a um, yeah what's that for build a role model a role model yeah you have to be thank you you have to be a, a, a role model and um, and, um, and 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 the other part of the answer I will give uh, in the next uh, after the session. Yeah, but, uh, I, but I have to give you do you one more one part because you said you want to be clear. Is there like a tactic where you test? Do my people really understand? Me? Yes. Yes, you, you have to ask. You have to ask your people, have you understood uh, what, I, what I'm asking for? And the answer should not be yes or no. Yeah. They have to repeat something. They have to say, say what is their opinion about, about, about your idea? Uh, how, how, how do they want to transform your order into practice or something like that? And, 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 and then you have to go through from working place to working place and look what is in, in which way they execute, execute, execute what you are asking for. So, so it, is, it, is, it is not leading by order. It is leading by, by, uh, by involving your people, it, it, uh, asking, asking whether they, they, they understand especially your purpose. And if you change a company, well, we started not as an insure tech, we started as a classic insurance company in 2007. Nobody talked about digitalization at that time, by the way. And it was not so easy, or it, 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 it would have been a mistake if we would have changed the company without any explanation from a classic insurance company into a fully digitalized company, because people fear about their working places and all these things. So, so you, you have to convince them. And convincing is not only argumentation. It, 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 is, it is a totally different mindset, and it is a fight. Uh, well, I think that this is now a German expression, but I think it's a fight for, for, for heart and for brain at mm. the end. And this is leadership. Yeah, George, um, you 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 have you have a responsibility uh, in 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 a, in a Chinese company and, and you're leading Chinese international uh, teams. What kind, what does leadership play for a role there? And and what's your biggest tip? So for for me, I think the leadership is an international concept. It doesn't. It kind of spans the culture, spans the uh, ages or demographics. So for, for, for us, the, the team is a very young, dynamic team. So we look for people who are very entrepreneurial in nature, um, and they, they just embrace the challenges. But, uh, but how do you find this out? OK, I'm, I'm yet now in a job interview with you. Yeah, imagine that situation. Mm -hmm. How do you find out uh, uh, if I really have this? 
Well, typically we look at the track record of what people have okay. delivered and then we talk to the people who have worked with them to understand how they've uh, delivered on an entrepreneurial promise. But, but I think that's a great thing to ask for referrals or to have referral calls. Um, I think it's a super interesting technique. Uh, we do this also sometimes um, because if nobody can do referrals or the stories differ, variate too much, that's the that's point. Stefan, do you also do like referral uh, calls or like, oh, give me your number uh, of your old boss or old colleagues? Because I know in Germany it's not so common. No. No? Okay. Um, Okay, um, and, and do you have another tactic where you like, really find this out? Because being entrepreneurial or not, I think that's, it's really hard to find out. Well, I think it's, it's very easy because actually, in fact, you can, you can be very transparent with the, with the people that it's a very dynamic type of culture. And generally, we feel that the people will self-select themselves. So if you, rather than kind of painting a very, very rosy picture that this is going to be wonderful, it's all going to be a walk in the park and, yeah. you know, It, it, it is being realistic about what, is, what the fights are ahead to deliver on the, on the promise. In the innovation and digital, it's not an easy, easy walk in the park. Yeah. Um, even if you're working with a big unicorn and you know, a successful company that is going very fast, it is a different set of challenges. And uh, are there differences for you guys if you hire a regular staff or super senior staff? Um, do, is, do you have that? Oh, that's me. Sorry, no relaxing for me then. <laughs> um, And is, do you have there some, some differences? Yeah, I think the, the main difference there is that even for the senior hires, we, we, we all also want to be transparent that it is about the ownership. So it's, you know, especially people who have had the teams underneath them, uh, different cultures, have a di different companies have different cultures. Yeah. So it is about them willing to own something and get, you know, roll up their sleeves and get dirty with, uh, with all the actual projects. And Stefan, how do you do it when you have a central hire in mind uh, for your company, uh, which, which is super important? Um, do you have there some, some tests you, you, you do or some, some, some questions you know, that, that should be interesting? As a, first of all, we, we, we look on the education, on the experience and uh, on, the, on personality. Um, um, if uh, anybody wants to become a, 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 a leader in the company, a, a boss or something like that, we, we test this normally. Um, and, um, and well, we, we do not hire because of, we want to combine different uh, uh, different uh, 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 international backgrounds or something like that. Because in Germany you can hire Germans, so yeah. it's it's. Uh, pff. And, and by the way, most of the Germans do not speak fluently English, so, so it is impossible to, to hire the same people as, uh, as, as George hires. It's, it's, uh, But you, you once told me um, um, that you, back in the days, or, um, that you um, sometimes uh, went uh, and said, let's do, let's do the final interview, job interview, not in the office, but in your own home. I'd, Why I'd, did you do this? I'd, I did this when, when, I, when I was employed at Allianz. Uh, uh, This was really amazing uh, to, to see how they live like, uh, and uh, I, I do this. I, I do this. Well, it, it is not common at the moment. I know, uh, uh, but I. But if I if I hire a, a woman or a man, I ask to, 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 to have common dinner with the partner in order to see what the partner is thinking about and. Uh, And, and, and by the way, whether they can use fork and knife, uh, which is uh, almost helpful. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about goals. Or chopsticks. Sorry? So it's uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> or chopsticks. So it's 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 not because of fork and knife. Ah, okay, 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 good. Okay, <laughs> we are <laughs> some intercultural <laughs> things going on here. Um, um, I think everybody, at, at least everybody I talk to, is super impressed by the story of Jong An. I think a lot of people are super interesting about the past Jong An tech is going to go. Um, I mean, uh, I think to, to, pro to process so many policies to be embedded and all these things is technical, super complex, uh, and to have a reliable system there. Uh, I can tell you a story. Uh, last year, uh, we, got a, we got a son, and uh, I needed to fill out a form to apply for an insurance policy, and it was like a, a readable, no, a writable PDF. So, you know, that's a quite different tech gap, I would say, between what you guys are doing, you both are doing, and such players. And um, big question is, what's your goal, especially for John on Tech, and, and what's like your master plan? And, you know, I don't want to get you fired, but like all the master plan parts you can share here today. 
Yeah, so I think for, for us as a, as a tech company with the insure tech uh, segment, we, our, our approach is uh, just to continue finding growth opportunities. Uh, we are, we're very keen to work with insurance companies to help the digital, digitalization plans. We also work with uh, many digital platforms uh, that are you know, ride sharing and e-commerce and all kinds of different verticals to also help to bring these two ecosystems together. So we see that in the embedded space, for example, there's a tremendous opportunity to bring this, uh, to, to bring this product to the forefront, bring this uh, to the customers. We've kind of gone through the similar journey in, uh, in China, and now we're, we're bringing that innovation out to the international markets. But, but George, <laughs> yeah, like everybody is talking about embedded insurance. Yep. As they yesterday talked about whatever, yeah, digitalization. But you guys are doing it, actually, not only talking about it. Right. What is the secret? Uh, I think the, there's no real secret except that we try a lot of different things to see which one it works. Uh, innovation in our, in, in our mind is very clear. It is about doing and it's about learning and it's about failing and trying again on many, many different fronts. So the fact that people see that we're successful in a particular area, it, it hides the fact that we're unsuccessful in many other areas, but it's, it, it is about the velocity and it's about trying a lot of different things. So people always celebrate successes and I think this is where we definitely achieve some, some really exciting milestones. Uh, but there's a lot of other things behind the scenes that we've experimented, we think around and then didn't work as, as well as, as we would have hoped. Yeah, we had a funny thing. I worked once at an online gaming company, and when there was a big failure, I mean, not because we were, you know, did, we did something on purpose, but there was a failure. Games are super hard to develop, stopping the development, and actually there was a party for the team, not uh, to say, oh, we lost so many millions, but more like, okay, we tried it, let's move on, and not that the people are frustrated. Of course, there was analysis of errors or something, but if it, if it was an ex external factor, a competitor launches something better, or something like that, then there was a little party where they say, okay, stop it, we make the decision, and now we move for the next project. Um, Stefan, what, what is, how about you, what, what is your end game uh, with, with the German family insurance? Well, end, end game may be the, the wrong word, by the way. So, so it's an ongoing process. And um, uh, I told you that I started my career at Allianz. Allianz was founded in 1890 by two guys. But uh, my company was founded in 2007 by two guys. And in 100 years, we are, and I strongly believe this, we are, we are much bigger than Allianz today. So, so there is no end game. Um, uh, if you ask for the end game, for, for, about for me, well, um, we are in Frankfurt very, very un, unsatisfied with the, with the actual mayor of Frankfurt. And recently I was asked in an interview what I think about this mayor. And I, I, I said, and this was a surprise for the audience, I said, I want to become mayor of Frankfurt. And, um, <laughs> and uh, this was on a Saturday. On Monday, uh, uh, the first newspaper announced this, and uh, all the other newspaper copied this. And now everybody in Frankfurt knows that I want to become ma mayor of Frankfurt. <laughs> um, uh, if, he, if, if the actual mayor does not step down, and I don't think he, he will do, uh, the next election is in 24. So, so that, that's my idea. And I say it here in Asia as well. I want to become mayor of Frankfurt in 2024. And, um, and then I visit this fair again uh, in a new role. All right, I think that's a very good thing. And uh, by the way, <laughs> oh, clap for him, thank you very much. Yes, yes, I think that's very good. Uh, and I think maybe then the new mayor of Frankfurt uh, can uh, help ITC uh, Europe coming to Europe. Uh, that would be a great thing. And there are short connections there. Then to Frankfurt. Yeah, of course. By, so by Frankfurt. The, Fra Fra Frankfurt is, 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 is the next location. Okay, we will talk yeah. to Ruth you like afterwards. <laughs> no, no. Um, all kidding aside, um, East meets West was uh, the story of this panel. Thank you for sharing a lot of uh, success or also small stories and instruments, how you do, how you run your business. Big question is, ITC uh, Las Vegas is coming up end of the year. Are we going to see you guys there too? George? Yes, definitely. So you will be there, and Stefan? Definitely not. No, definitely yes. <laughs> definitely yes. And the only question we have for the audience, guys, are you guys going to ITC Las Vegas too? Yes. Yeah, a few. See some nodding heads. Thank you very much. Then, thank you very much, George. Thank you very much, Stefan. Give them a round of applause. Thank you very much.